It was kind of like asking people to move to the moon. Between the gender reveal parties and the government's insistence on the stability of gender, I mean, we had to do something. So we started Utopiaville. And yeah, we're, we're sticking to that name. Utopiaville is a self-sustaining commune in central Vermont. The inhabitants work, play, and live similarly to the rest of society, only without gender. I'm a farmer in the community garden. My specialty is root vegetables. And I'm a primary care physician at the hospital. We met in school when we were five years old. We had a winter fest where the whole class went ice skating on the lake, but I was afraid of the ice breaking, so I asked if I could stay in the classroom. And I left my ice skates at home accidentally. So the teacher stayed back with us. By the end of the school day, we were best friends. I mean, we were just kids. We had lots of friends. But around the time we turned 15, that group of friends from primary school had turned into one of the closest, most loving, romantic relationships I could have imagined. We were all reading Judith Butler, Judith Lorber. These theorists were questioning the legitimacy of gender and sex as identities. Reading them really helped us organize our frustrations with the gender binary. Butler really wanted people to understand sexual difference as multiplicities instead of a binary. That half confused me, but it seemed like a step in the right direction. Meanwhile, Lorber was advocating for a full-on restructuring of society that would eradicate an emphasis on gender. It was such a beautiful thought, but seemed so impossible. Try raising a kid without gender in society. You can't. From birthday parties, to school, to doctor's appointments, that kid will get gendered. So we decided we have to go outside society, make our own. So we began brainstorming and began recruiting for our utopia. We realized that we'd have to rewrite the body because the focus on sex organs was an unhelpful overemphasis. So we said, no more sex organs. I mean, obviously people still have little penises, crooked penises, vaginas, but that doesn't mean any more about their identity than what shape their toes are. We intentionally stripped our language of any erogenous focus on these parts. That was sort of a win-win because it completely liberated the body in terms of acceptable, enjoyable sexual acts. Pretty much by unfetishizing genitalia, we reduced the seeming importance of sexual differentiation. After school, I started my apprenticeship at the hospital. And Lemon and I started ours at the garden. Pumpernickel and Darfus were doing administrative stuff at the town hall back then. Our, of course, our relationship is always changing, developing. Like, I used to hike with Darfus every Sunday, and now you have way more one-on-one -on -one time with here than I do. Yeah, well, that's because I agreed to read Darfus' poetry. Um, yeah, anyway, the five of us moved into the greenhouse on the corner just after I turned 25. Um, yeah, we felt pretty grown up, so we decided to have some kids. Um, Oslo and Darfus had uteruses, so they did the baby carrying for us. We got sperm from the hospital supply. Now we have two lovely children. Rosa is four and Flor is two months. Well, Rosa is old enough for primary school now, and Flor is still too young for school, so Z goes to work with everyone but me. No baby is allowed in the hospital. I mean, childcare can be really tricky. I can't believe my parents managed There's just three of them. It feels like enough work for the five of us. That being said, we really enjoy parenting. Um, there's so much mutual trust and honesty in this relationship. We focused on degendering family structures and child rearing, as well as division of work and government. We spent five years planning, recruiting, interviewing, and now we're five years in, and honestly, it's working. We have a community without gender. And we still don't totally know what that will look like in the long term, but we're already seeing so much beauty we never even predicted. We know that the founders put a lot of effort into making this community different than society outside of here. Supposedly, not every person has the same opportunities. People can't choose what they wear or what kind of work they want to do there. Yeah. People out there must feel so confined, trapped. I can't imagine. I'm grateful for what we have here. Yeah, life is good in Utopia, though. I mean, any system has its troubles, but here we make sure gender isn't ours. It's just really great to know that the kids who've grown up here 
won't even know the words man, woman, gender, their lives won't be limited by the system of power that we grew up with. How your dress looks with that lip shade How people always tell me You're the best friend they ever made Take me to the commune We can live with Cat Stevens He can play the team boy. Oh, I like to live up in a house And lift up in a tree Only you and me Maybe a kid, maybe a dream Maybe from the top